But the only way, the only time I think I've ever been able to understand myself was on an acid trip. Then things were really clear. As a psychologist, I have to tell you that the understanding you think you have gained just doesn't fit in with the facts. Here are the facts. You've been on a number of trips, and we're both agreed that you're having even more problems with your school, your parents, and even your friends. Perhaps what you think or feel on a trip just doesn't fit in with the straight world that you must return to and must learn to live in. As far as understanding yourself is concerned, the only real understanding you could gain would come from having a bummer and then analyzing it which would mean you'd have to want to try to have bummers and then attempt to understand them the way that psychologists analyze dreams, which, unless you are properly trained, you cannot do by yourself. What if you were really cool when you did it? The setting's just right. You're not uptight or paranoid about getting busted. <laughs> what, if, what if you think of it as a great adventure, a great experience, and you have someone with you through the whole trip, someone straight who hasn't had any acid? Well, it could be a great experience and a great adventure if, if you're really in the right frame of mind. If you're sure about the dose in the cap. If you could be absolutely certain there wouldn't be chromosome damage. If you won't feel guilty about what your parents would think. And if you're sure you couldn't get busted because it is against the law. But how can you be sure that for the eight to 16 hours the trip will take that your straight friend, your babysitter, will be reliable? will stay with you and be able to handle any problems you might get into and not have a contact trip recurrence of his own just from watching you on yours. What's a luck? You don't understand. I keep explaining it, but you don't understand. LSD, or mescaline even, if you just let it happen, wow, you find you can really love your fellow man, even when you come down. You can really love your fellow man. No, I don't agree with you. I mean, what kind of a person are you if you can only love your fellow man if you've taken drugs? But LSD and mescaline open your mind, your feelings. They make you feel you can just about love everybody. But I always hear that, Lori. I mean, I think kids that take a lot of acid must have some really big hang-ups. How can they be capable of loving anyone? Gee, Lori, it's easy to say you love everybody, but it's very hard to find just one person to love. Who says you can't love one person when you're on acid? What is there to stop you? I say you can't. I mean, it takes over 10 hours for an LSD trip, right? Right. So the kids that are involved in LSD don't have time for anything but themselves. They don't have time for anybody, whether it be just one person or everyone in their lives. You guys are just not with it. You belong back in the dark ages with the cavemen. How do you expect to get on in this world if you don't keep up with what's going on? I know what's wrong with the whole world. But everyone says when you drop some acid, the whole world becomes clear to you, like an open book. I've got news for you. It would take more than LSD for me to understand what's wrong with the whole world, or even our local politics. Honey, you may think that you know things when you're up, but you can't really know any more than you already knew before you took the LSD. You may have feelings with LSD about what you know, feelings you've never felt before. But you could never know what you haven't learned yet. Evelyn, I've been trying to tell you something, but you never give me a chance. I'm listening. Why don't you tell me what you're going to say? I've been thinking. We should try some acid. I hear it's a real cool trip. Sure, sure. And so is cocaine. But where are we going to find that kind of money? Besides, if anyone finds out, we'll be in a lot of trouble. Man, like cocaine is a hard drug. I'm talking about acid, dummy. LSD, not cocaine. Don't tell me about acid. I know too many kids around here that they tell me that they've been on bad trips on LSD. They saw rats, roaches in different sizes, shapes, and colors. It was like a nightmare. That stuff ain't for me. No way. Isn't it true that everybody's being uptight about those freaky chromosomes? Isn't it true that most scientists don't agree on chromosome breakage? Besides, does it matter as long as I don't drop any acid while I'm pregnant? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if LSD won't kill my chromosomes, the pollution in the air and water will. So what's the difference? The difference is we're talking about two different things. You know that if we don't we won't damage your chromosomes. All scientists know that it's too soon to know exactly what the damage will be, especially to your children and your children's children. But water and air pollution are killing us anyway. Well, that could be. But I don't agree that we should just sit back, swallow some acid, and say, well, man, pollution's going to kill us anyway. This time, the whole country is worried about pollution. And things are being done about it all the time. How much are we doing about it if all we do is complain and swallow a drug? Not much better than bad people doing bad things about our water and air. This world's in bad shape but it's the world that your generation is going to have to run in the next 10 to 30 years. So what kind of preparation is LSD, STP, DMT, peyote, mescaline, or marijuana for what you're going to have to do to straighten it out? <laughs>